praise. We honor you this day, oh Father God. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that this word today will begin to change the hearts and the minds of your people for the better. God, we thank you right now that every demonic force, every principality, every spirit of wickedness that wants to come against this live stream, that wants to come against your people, that wants to get in and begin to cause chaos in this day. God, we counsel the plans of the adversary today. We nullify his plans and God, we uproot them, we derail them, and we believe and cover with the blood of Jesus this day, this live stream, this atmosphere, and we decree and declare your people shall be blessed. Now, Father, I ask you to speak through me. Let your Holy Spirit begin to flow through revelation, through authority, through prophecy, through whatever means that your Holy Spirit wants to operate today. We give the Holy Spirit complete control to do whatever he wants to do. And Lord God, we thank you for these, your people in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, God bless you this morning. Again, come on in, share the link that's on your screen. Uh, invite somebody to join with us on today and begin to let them know that we are here, that we are live, and that we are ready to gather around the word of the Lord together in a supernatural way. And again, I want you to share as quickly as you can, be a social media evangelist, because again, we're not gonna be on too long today. We gotta make sure that we're on time, but yet there is a word from the Lord, all right? There is a word from the Lord. So go ahead and share this to your timeline, share it to your group, share it in a text message, grab the link, send it out in a text message and say, hey, we are on. Let somebody know, come on, don't hold it to yourself, but go ahead and share this with somebody else so that they can be blessed by the word on this morning. Because I believe that this word that I'm going to share with you this morning is really going to begin to help you in your walk with life. Uh, even though maybe you may have been faced with some challenges, you may be in some difficult situations. I believe that the Lord is about to change your situation today. I believe that things are about to turn in your favor. And I believe that you need this word in order to begin to defeat the enemy in your life today. And so let's go into the word this morning. I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter number 11. Let's go there quickly. Mark chapter number 11. I'm going to read out of the new uh, international version this morning, the NIV translation. So those of you that's watching, go ahead and put that on the screen this morning. Amen. And this is the Alabama edition. So again, those of you that are just jumping on, we are still in Florence, Alabama. We fly out later today. We'll arrive back in Houston around about 8, 30, 9 o'clock uh, p.m. And so we look forward to getting back to the family, getting back to Houston. And so nevertheless, uh, we are here to share this great, awesome word with you. And again, those of you that may have jumped on a little bit late that are here in Florence uh, that came out to the services, thank you again for your hospitality, your love, and your support. All right. Mark chapter number 11, verse number 22 is where I want to start this morning. And again, reading out the NIV translation. Again, somebody go ahead and inscribe that on the screen this morning. Go ahead and comment that. So the people that watch the replay will know where we're coming from and know uh, the word that we're bringing forth today. Amen. Uh, and so it says, have faith in God. Jesus answered and said, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that whatever they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so this morning, I want to share with you just from the subject, just a little bit about equipping you in your faith, being equipped in your faith. Come on, somebody go ahead and type that on the screen this morning, being equipped in your faith. And I believe that this is a vital, vital subject. And I really want to kind of take my time with it and share it. I may not finish it today. We may go back into it tomorrow, just depending on how the Lord leads us and how the Lord begins to revelate the scripture, the word today. But I believe the body of Christ needs to be more equipped in their faith. And the reason I say this is because a lot of times we don't exercise our faith. And what do I mean by exercising our faith? A lot of times when sicknesses come upon our body, we don't have the faith to believe that we're already healed. We don't have the faith to believe that whatever negative report that the doctor gave us will not be so, that God would turn that thing. And so a lot of times when we're faced with oppression, when we're faced with depression and opposition, in our life. It is the last thing on our list that we begin to occupy or better yet begin to tap into is that area of faith. And so I believe that even in this season for what's coming upon the earth, we're going to need to be equipped in our faith. Come on, somebody go ahead and type that on the screen. You have to be equipped in your faith. And so the Bible says, have faith in God. That's number one. I want you to begin to understand this. This is the season 
people of God, that you got to begin to have faith in God. This is not the season to have faith in your money. It's not the season to have faith in your own will. It's not the season to have faith in just your pastor. It's not in the season where you have to have faith in your resources. This is the season that you got to have faith in God. Come on, I know you trust in a lot of other things. I know you got a lot of things that you can depend on, things that you can lean on, but you need to understand that your faith needs to be anchored and rooted in God in this season. And so this is what the Bible is telling us here in Mark chapter 11. It's saying, have faith in God. Don't put your faith, your trust, your hope in nothing else but the love of Jesus Christ, nothing but God himself. And so as we have faith in God, we trust and we know that he is able to bring us out of whatever situation we're going through, whatever we're facing in our life, whatever challenges that we may be going through, whatever the situation may be, we have faith in God that he will begin to what? Bring us out, that he will begin to deliver us. And I get it. It's a lot of times that it's so easy to put our faith in our resources. It's so easy to put our faith in ourselves because a lot of times when we're faced with situations, we're looking not what? Not unto the author and the finish of our faith, but we're looking towards ourselves to see how we can maneuver, how we can shift, how we can get things done, where we can begin to cr cross some T's, dot some I's in order to get some things done. But ultimately, this is the time that you got to begin to understand it is our faith in God that's going to begin to override everything else that we are pushing towards. And so as we have faith in God, there's so many things that will begin to happen in our lives, so many challenges that we wouldn't have to go through, and we will shorten the season of our warfare if we just had a lot more faith in God. And so the Bible starts off by just even saying that, have faith in God, and it says, Jesus answered and said, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. And so what's the next key reference here? I want you to understand what the Bible is saying in verse number, 11, uh, verse number 22, going into verse 24. He says, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain. So what's the first thing? The first thing is we got to have faith in God. That's number one. The second thing is we have to do what? We have to say something. We have to say something to the situation. And a lot of times, this is the most uh, uneffective area that the body of Christ begins to operate in, and that is not speaking to their mountain, not speaking to their situation. Because why? When sickness comes upon your body, we're oftentimes coming into agreement with it. When we uh, have a symptom come on us, you may be walking out at, at, at night and in some cold air, and the next morning you got a cough, the next morning your throat is scratching. And what is the first thing you say? I hope I'm not getting sick. I hope I ain't got COVID. I hope I ain't got this. There's a lot of things that come through your mind. You start speaking towards uh, the sickness or the pain. But we need to start speaking and saying something to the mountain. And so whatever comes your way, even if it's just that simple example I just used, where you feel like your throat is getting scratchy, you feel like something is going on, and you say, man, uh, uh, I hope ain't no cold coming on me, no flu. That ain't what you say. You start speaking and saying, whatever's trying to come on me, I bind it in the name of Jesus. It's not going to come to pass. It shall not be so. And so we need to learn to change our language, change our what? Confession of faith. Because he says, truly, I tell you, if anyone one says to this mountain. And here's the thing. A lot of us think that we can't say to the mountain because of who we are and where we come from. But the Bible says, whosoever, he says, it's anyone, which means it's no respect to a person. So it doesn't even matter if you're a sinner. It doesn't matter if you're a saint. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. It doesn't matter if you're an apostle. It doesn't matter if you're an evangelist. It doesn't matter who you are. God is no respect to a person. He's saying anyone. That means whosoever can have what? Whatsoever. And so whoever you are and whatever you've been involved in, God is saying today, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea. But here's the next thing it says, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that whatever they say will happen, it will be done for them. So catch this. Let's go back and recap. The first thing is have faith in God. Number one. Number two, you got to say something to your situation. You got to speak to your mountain. And I'm not talking about speaking in agreement. I'm talking about coming against whatever that thing is. And then watch this. You have to give it an assignment. 
Come on, that's point number three. You have to give it an assignment. It does you no good to have faith in God and speak to the situation and do not give it an assignment. Do not tell it what to do. The Bible says, he says, go, he says, say to the mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea. What is that? It's giving direction. And so when you find yourself in a situation, you have to give that situation direction. You got to begin to tell your problem where to go. You got to begin to tell your situation where to go. And oftentimes we don't begin to give our situation an assignment. We just sit there and just say, you know what? I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Okay, you canceled it, but where is it still at? It's still in your midst. It's still where you are. It has not left your life. And this is why we we, we speak against certain things, or, or better yet, we, we say the blood of Jesus is against you, all these different types of things. And, and yes, it begins to release the pressure from our lives for a moment. But what happens two or three weeks later? What happens a month, a month later? We find ourselves going back into the same situation, back into the same things, all over again. Why? Because we never gave that situation direction. And this is why we got to understand the power of our words. This is why we got to understand that there's power of life and death in our mouth. And we have to be careful what we are speaking. We have to be careful what we are decreeing. And we have to be careful what we are releasing out of our mouth. And so as we have faith in God, we have to speak or say something to the situation. That's number two. Number three, you have to give it an assignment. You have to tell that thing where to go. You got to tell it what to do. You got to tell it to exit your life. And when you tell it to exit your life, you have to be specific about these things. And this is the thing you got to understand. When it comes to the things of God, you have to be intentional. It's not enough just to begin to say, I bind the spirit of lack off of my finances. Okay, you binded it, but guess what? And you may experience an unexpected check in the mail. Maybe money started coming into your life. And then all of a sudden, two months later, you're back in the same situation you was in two months ago or one month ago or two weeks ago or a few days ago. Why? Because you never gave lack an assignment. You never cast lack out of your life and tell it where to go. Y'all remember that story in the Bible when Jesus went and cast the spirit, the unclean spirit out of the boy and he sent it into what? He gave it an assignment. He sent it not just into the air, not just into the camp where the people were. He sent it where? Into the swine and he caused the swine even to go and run right off the cliff. Why? To begin to get rid of the spirits. He gave them an assignment on where to go. And whatever spirit is operating in your life, you got to tell that spirit where to go. And listen, you may not have no pigs that you can send that, that spirit, that unclean spirit into, but you need to send that spirit somewhere. Send it out of your house and command it never to begin to cross the threshing floor of your house ever again. Come on, you got to be specific when it comes to spirits. Because here's the thing. Yes, you have the authority. Yes, you have power. Yes, you have dominion to begin to tell the spirits where to go and what to do. And they have to obey because even what the disciples say, Lord, even they obey, even the demons obey in your name. When we cast them out in your name, they obey. They listen because you've done it in the name of the father. You've done it in the name of Jesus. So at the name of Jesus, they have to obey. And so what it is, they obeying what you're saying and they're doing exactly what you say. All you told them to do was to loose you for a moment. And what happened? They loosed you for a moment because we're not specific in our prayers. We're not specific in our decrees and we're not specific in warfare. And a lot of us do not understand. And this is the area we have been not equipped in. We have not been equipped in the area of warfare. Many people don't even believe that demons exist. Many people don't even believe that hell exists. Many people don't even believe uh, in dark powers, witchcraft and manipulation. But these things are real. And if you, the, the deeper you get in the anointing, the deeper you get in Christ, you'll begin to see these things happen in your life. And you'll begin to see a lot of these things are true. They're real. And then you have to begin to understand how to deal with these spirits. And so in the Bible, it says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24, he says, if anyone says to the mountain, go, this is the assignment, throw yourself into the sea. Now, why is it that he says, uh, now I want you to, I want you to catch this real quick. Why is it that Jesus tells us this? And he says, uh, tell it to go throw yourself into the sea. He says, whoever says to this mountain, there's, there's, there's an underlining prophetic, uh, demonstration that is taking place here in this word that I think a lot of believers miss. 
because a lot of times we just we just have holler, scream, and shout because we're able to give uh, instructions and begin to say a thing, and and we say what well, whatever we ask in prayer, I receive it. I'll have whatever I say. That's the part we take away from this scripture. I can have whatever I say. Yes, you can. But here's the thing. You got to be specific in your assignment. Come on, everybody go ahead and share. Everybody that's coming on this morning. I see there's about 600 of you watching collectively across every platform. Go ahead and share real quick. I'm, I'm only halfway through this message. I know I've got a short period of time, but please go ahead and share. The link is on your screen. Watch this. He, he doesn't just say, uh, I'm going to remove the mountain out of my life. Go and sit on another plane. What happens? He says, whoever says to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. This is very prophetic here because you got to understand why is it that the mountain needs to go into the sea? The reason why is because when you are sending out spirits, when you are sending out uh, whatever the situation is you've been in your life, you have to send it into something that is big enough to hold your issue. Watch this. So he said, he says, be cast into the sea. Why? Because the sea is the only thing that can swallow up a mountain. Are you with me this morning? And so when, when you are when you are casting out whatever you're casting out, whatever the spirit is, whatever the situation is, are you sending it to a place that is able or better yet has the capacity to hold your situation? And so he says, go throw yourself into the sea. And he says, and if you do not doubt in their heart, but believe that whatever they say will happen, it will be done for them. Now, the good thing I like about this is you don't have to lift a finger. All you got to do is open your mouth. He says, if you just open your mouth and say to the mountain, be thrown into the sea, throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that whatever they say will happen, it will be done for them. This is the part we shout about in church that I can have whatever I say. And this is the thing, but you cannot begin to doubt. Are you with me? And a lot of us, we, we, be, we believe that God can heal but we also doubt that God can heal. We believe that God can deliver and set free, but we doubt if he can really do it. And so we have to get rid of what? The spirit of doubt. We have to remove doubt because anywhere that there is doubt, there cannot be a miracle. And this is why you don't see a lot of healing in churches anymore. You don't see a lot of miraculous power being released, released in our churches anymore because a lot of people doubt the very power of God. You can have somebody walking in on crutches and say, do y'all believe we can heal? Some people just spectate and they're not really believing. And this is why we don't see the manifestation of the healing that is preached about in the Bible. And this is why believing is so important. You have to believe in the power of our God. And this is why you have to be in an atmosphere with like-minded believers. Because if you are in a room of people that don't believe in healing, that don't believe in the power of God, that don't believe that demons exist, you're going to you're gonna have a hard time casting out. You'll have a hard time uh, uh, seeing the miracle in that atmosphere because they limit what they can do. And it's almost like Jesus. Jesus was limited to what he could do in his own region. Why? Because they did not see him as the Messiah. They only saw him as Mary's boy. Are you listening to me? So they did not believe to the level of those that, 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 that met him as the Messiah. They believed on the level of how they met him as that's my cousin. That's my, that's Mary's boy. That's that, you know, I, I know them. That, that's the one that was in the manger because why he got no honor in his own hometown. And so the Bible says he could do what? Not many miracles. And so what's the reason? Did it make Jesus less anointed? Did it mean that he could not operate in miracle signs and wonders? No, it was the, it was, it was based on the level of their belief because of how they received him, because of how they saw him. And this is why people in your circle, come on, I'm not saying not to associate with people of low level faith, but when it comes time to you getting things done, when it comes time for you to begin to speak and shift things concerning your atmosphere. You need people to come into agreement with you that has faith and that believe in the same direction of your belief. You don't need people standing around spectating, saying, oh, I, 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 can he heal? Let me see if he can heal them. Let me see if this is going to work. Let me see if this thing is real. No, I need you believing, not in me, but believing in the power of God. And when we all get on one accord and believe in the power of that we're supposed to be operating in through Christ, that's when we begin to see the miracles. But when you have doubt, and this is what we got to get out of the sanctuary, this is what we got to get out of our churches, is the spirit of spectatorship. A lot of people just come to spectate, just to see what's going on. 
are you listening to me? And, and I witness this in every service I go to. And I, I even see uh, portions of it here in Alabama. There were some people that missed out on miracles because they just came to see a man. They heard about a prophet that was coming from Houston and they wanted to come and see. Why is a prophet coming to an AEM, AEM uh, what is it, honey? AME -E church. Why you listen to me? It did not make sense. But God was trying to do something and establish something in the spirit. And so when you have a spirit of spectating, wow. okay, help me, Holy Spirit. Wow. When you have a spirit, I just want to see what's going on. I just want to see uh, uh, what's so, what's so, what's so, what, what is all the hype about? The hype is about Jesus. And I'm telling you, when we get to a place where we move the spirit of spectation out of our atmospheres and put our focus on Christ, we'll see the miracles that's, that we talk about in the Bible. We'll see the blind be able to see. We'll see the lame be able to walk. We'll see the dead in Christ begin to rise up. Where's the miracles that Jesus performed in the word? And he's, here's the thing. We can't say that we, we're not supposed to be doing those kind of miracles because Jesus says greater works shall thee do. So where is the great, I'm talking about, so when Jesus calls the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the dead to rise, we're supposed to be doing greater. Come on here, somebody. We're supposed to be doing greater works. And we're not even doing the basic work. Are y'all with me this morning? There's a lot of churches on every corner. How many miracles are being produced in them? There's offerings being raised in every single one of them. But how many bodies have been raised? Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. Hallelujah. You can praise him in the background. Honey. Go ahead and get to deliverance. Get free over there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you. But but we're, we're so geared. Uh, this church, this church, this church, this church, this church. And we make up the ecclesia, the whole entire body of believers. But where is the greater works that ye shall do, says Jesus? We don't see them in our churches. Why? Because everybody has a motive. Now coming to church, even from the pulpit, there's a motive, there's an agenda. And we have gotten so far away from the kingdom agenda that we are missing the moves and the works of God. And this is what the Bible says in Ephesians, that what? He said some apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, and pastors for what? The equipping of the saints for the works of ministry. Why don't we teach healing? Why don't we teach deliverance? Why don't we teach these things? in our churches, because we really don't believe the Bible that we preach about. Because we should be, we're supposed to be doing greater works than Jesus did. And right now the church is letting him down. Because if someone, and you think about this, look at all the people that, that sought after Jesus and you know what? I believe, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why I love what God is about to do at Breakthrough Harvest Church. And I can feel it, but I can't share it with some of y'all because some of y'all just uh, uh, just uh, uh, start looking just to see if I'm saying it's true. But you're going to see some difference in Breakthrough Harvest Church. It's going to attract people to God, not to men. When you put Christ back in the center and begin to get on one accord and operate in the miracle signs and wonders that the Bible preaches about, you won't have a problem growing your church. People lined up because they wanted to be healed by Jesus. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. That woman pressed her way through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. Why? Because she believed that she would get healed. Where are the people that are lining up outside of your church saying, I want to be healed? And I believe today, Breakthrough Harvest Church is going to live up to his name that I can come to this church and get a breakthrough in any area of my life. Not wait five years to get it. But I'm talking about when I show up, my faith is so in tune with what God can do through this ministry that if I can just get in the atmosphere, that by the time I leave this service, what I need will be available to me. And here's what we say. Well, God maybe can't do it. Maybe it ain't meant for God to do it. No, listen, let me tell you something. When we get into that place, Jesus did not turn anybody away who wanted to be healed. If they pressed and he saw their faith, that's why he said, it is your faith that has made you what? Whole. It is your faith 
that causes you to be healed? Where is our faith? It ain't the faith that the pastor got. It ain't the faith that Jesus has. It's the faith that you have. That you come and you say, you know what? I believe that what I need is in this atmosphere. But we don't come with that expectation faith. We come with that spectator faith. Let me see what they're wearing today. They wore some. They wore some nice shoes last week. I want to. Let me see if I can get me a pair that's better than them. And I'm gonna. And I, I gotta. I gotta. I'm, I'm worried about how this church dressed. We worry about the dumbest things in church, and I hate to say it like that, but we worry about the dumbest things when it comes to the ecclesia. We worry about I don't have nothing to wear to church. Uh, uh, what if I don't dress like them? What if my color, the color of my skin, is different? Listen, this we worrying about too much stuff when we need to be worried about Christ. And this is why we don't see miracles in our churches the way we saw in the Bible, because we have uh, too many forms of what we think ministry church is supposed to look like. Huh? Am I frozen? Can you still hear me? I may be frozen. All right. I think I'm frozen, but as long as y'all can hear me. It's just the enemy because the enemy don't like what I'm talking about. Uh, but he's gonna be all right. He's gonna be <laughs> he gonna be all right. Am I still frozen? You guys, let me know if I'm frozen. Those of you that's online, maybe it's just on my maybe our devices because of the thing. I don't think I'm frozen now. Let me see. Let me see if I'm still okay. I'm not frozen. All right, we're good. I don't. Well, maybe I am frozen. Am I frozen? They said we can see it here. Okay, I'm frozen, but y'all can hear. All right. <laughs> All right, the devil ain't gonna keep me still. He'll be all right. Glory to God. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to get it back on or off. Let me see if that works. Okay. All right, let's still hear me. I'm just showing my camera now for whatever reason. All right, so y'all can hear. Praise the Lord. That's why you gotta be that long. The, the word of God is what's gonna last, not the visual. That's why I told it's a, that, that's the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? The perspective, what you're looking for, you don't need to see it. You need to hear it. You need to be able to hear the word. The word of God is the most important thing, the most relative thing that you can ever receive. All right. And so uh it's back. Oh, okay. I can't see it on my screen, but they said we're back. All right, well, praise the Lord. As long as you can hear me, and if you can, those of you that can see me, praise the Lord. You can, you can hear me. You can see me. All right. And so, I'm not gonna have time to give y'all all these points. I know I'm not. I'm not even gonna give y'all all of them because of the time. Uh, but I'm gonna share some things with you. I might go back into this tomorrow about faith. Uh, but let me finish this right here in the scripture, and then we'll 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 pick it back up tomorrow. We may come back from the same scripture tomorrow. Uh, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that whatever they say will happen, it will be done for them. Here's the thing. You got to believe that it's going to be done. All right. I know I'm frozen. If I'm frozen, as long as you can hear me, hear the word, we're still going to begin to move forward. Everything's going to be all right in just a moment. We only got about five more minutes anyway. All right. Uh, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer. Look at what it says, whatever you ask for in prayer. Here's another problem. We are asking for things, and here's why we haven't received them, because you are asking for it absent of prayer. I think we're back. We're not frozen anymore. We're back. God gave us back, all right? Because <laughs> we have authority over the enemy. Watch this. He says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you receive it. How are you asking God for what you are asking for? Are you just asking him, God, just give me this. God, make me wealthy. God, heal my body. Or are you asking him in prayer? Because there's a way that you come to God in prayer. We talked about this. Our Father who art in him, the Lord's Prayer. It's talked about that in every translation of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can find it there. The Lord's Prayer. And so the Bible says it like this. Whatever you ask in what? Prayer. Not in suffering. Not in pain. Not in frustration, not in worry, not in stress, not in weariness, but in what? In prayer. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so if I ask for it, not outside of prayer, but ask for it in prayer, and I believe in my heart that I've already received it, the Bible says I will have that thing. And this is the thing we got to do. We got to begin to start learning how to ask for it in prayer. 
Now, uh, that's a whole other subject because a lot of us, I'm not saying just go to God in prayer. And the first thing you go, you say, uh, you go on your knees and you pray. And you say, Lord, I ask you to wrong. No, you don't ask for God for anything without honoring him first. And this is why you need to learn. The Bible says in, uh, uh, I forgot this exact scripture off the top of my head, but when it goes into the Lord's prayer, he says, this is how you ought to pray. And it's, it's actually labeled in the Bible as Lord, the Lord is teaching us how to teaching us how to pray. He said, this is how ye ought to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so he goes through that whole spiel of how we ought to pray. Why? Because you need to pray for the kingdom of heaven to come where you are. That's why he says, our father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom, what? Come, come where? Where I am. And so when you honor God in first, that's why he says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name is saying, Lord, I'm honoring you. Uh, your name is great. Your name is worthy to be lifted high. And so as you are in prayer, it is after you've honored God, you've reverenced him, you've asked him to forgive you of all of your sins, you have repented, gotten yourself in a place of humility, then you can ask God, ask him for whatever you desire in prayer. And then you believe that whatever you ask your father for, that it's going to be done. And therefore you will what? Receive it. And this is why the Bible like having childlike faith. You remember some of you when you was little and you were going to ask your parents for certain things. And I know sometimes they will tell you no, but sometimes if you really just go back and look at the things that they told you, yes, you could have, yes, you could do. Most of those things, you had already saw it in your mind that they was going to allow you to do it. And the things that you doubted that they were going to let you do, oftentimes you got to know on that situation. How many can contest to that? When you, when you was coming up and there were certain things and you even deal with it in your natural life, you know, there's certain things you're like, man, oh, if I do this, I see these things. It's, this, this is going to cause some things to blow up. This would be great if I could do this and this would happen. If I can arrange this, if I just uh, redo this, this is going to work. And because you saw it working and you moved towards it, you already saw it. You already received it. So what happened? Eventually, when you put those that faith in action, it happened just like you saw it. But when you started doubting in certain situations and said, man, I don't know if this is going to work. I hope it worked. Uh, I'm going to try, but it may not come through this way. What happened? Sometimes in those areas of doubt, because you doubt it, you hit that brick wall. Are you listening to me? And so you cannot begin to doubt, but you got to have faith that overrides that doubt. And you got to begin to believe that whatever you ask God for in prayer, I've already received it. How do you how do you already receive it? By acting like it's already done. Decreeing that it's already done. Amen. Listen, we're going to take this up a little bit later. We'll share some more about this. I got to get ready to shift here. I want to pray for you all this morning. If you're watching me on any platform this morning and you say you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, those of you that's watching, those of you that's tuning in, and you say today, I want to make 100% sure that heaven is my place of eternity. I want you to go ahead and just type the word me on the screen. If you're watching me and you say, I want to make 100% sure that I'm going to heaven today. Tomorrow is not promised. The next moment is not promised. But today, I want to give my life to the Father. If that's you, I want you to type the word me on the screen right now. And I want to pray this very simple prayer with you before we take our communion. I want you to repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that your son Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that he was resurrected with all power in his hands. And so today, I open the door to my heart to you and I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, come into my soul and save me today. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen.